Hello everybody. Uh, what I want to talk to you about today is how you can awaken your kundalini energy. Um, a lot of people, this is their desire with kundalini yoga and other practices. <clears throat> Sorry, I haven't been up that long. And it's, it's a good thing that everybody I think should uh, consider trying to do. Um, it's your natural state. I think it's probably awakened when you're younger and then it falls asleep just like our minds do. Um, so I want to tell you, and I'm not saying it's fully awakened in me, but it definitely is. Um, and I can prove that to you. I'll probably make another video showing you what happens to me. This has been happening for a couple of years, uh, about three years. And I want to tell you what I did um, to make this happen, although I didn't know that's what was going to happen. So I started meditating in about 2006 when after The Secret came out, and then I was trying to manifest things. Um, however, that quickly dissolved my material desires, because as you stop your mind, um, all the worldly desires start to... Um, become less important because you start to realize that they're impermanent, nothing lasts. And uh, there's something so much bigger than anything you could ever have uh, on a physical level. So I had been meditating, starting to have experiences because I was doing mantra meditation, which I highly recommend. I don't recommend TM, Transcendental Meditation. I like the term transcendental meditation because that's what you're doing is transcending, transcending your mind. But I don't like the organization transcendental meditation because um, I don't I don't dislike them, but I, I don't like the idea of uh, you have to pay two thousand five hundred dollars for a mantra, which anybody can use any mantra. So, anyhow. Blah, blah, blah. I started doing mantra meditation. Um, I used the sound ah, which is what Wayne Dyer recommends. Um, and then I also used the sound om. O-M. Om. And it worked really, really well for me. And it still does. Um, sometimes, though, I find I need to um, work with my mind a little bit. And I'll also use... Um, the quantum pause technique which you can search on YouTube and I'll use that before I start doing my mantra meditation and it really helps settle the mind um, so that you can laser beam focus it with with your mantra so I'm reading this book and this is I mean I I've known something was up for a couple of years but uh, because this started happening to me, this involuntary movement of my body. And um, so, I, you know, I'm like, well, what's going on? And I couldn't really talk to anybody about it. I talked to my girlfriend at the time and told her. And I don't know, honestly, I think she was probably a little freaked out by it. Maybe, maybe not. Um, but... Um, I had been meditating uh, using mantra meditation and I had reached states where my breath actually stopped and extreme, extreme ecstasy arises out of that total stopping of, of your personality. Um, and anybody that tells you that it can't be done, that you can't stop your mind, simply isn't practicing correctly. Or not sufficiently, um, not enough. So those people, um, I'll tell you, just have to practice more and properly. And um, if you're meditating on objects uh, with a desired outcome, um, as far as, say, even meditating on world peace, even though I think that's a very noble thing to do, if you're meditating on some type of idea um, and it's keeping your mind engaged then what's going to happen is it, you're not going to be able to reach total stillness what you need to be able to do is is 
meditate in such a way that um, you're actually willing to release everything, all of yourself, because that's what keeps us from knowing our creator, you know, us, you know, knowing our source is hanging on to us. You know, it sounds like such a paradox, but it's true. So I'm reading this book here. It's called The Little Book of Hercules. And I recommend if you're serious about making spiritual progress, that you should read it. And more so than that, I recommend that you just um, spend some time meditating every day. Dedicate your life to meditating. Not your whole life. But just dedicate a small portion of it. Maybe it's a half hour. Maybe it's an hour a day. And the purpose of it is to stop your mind. Not for any other means. To see if you can consistently. Even if you can do it once in your entire life. I feel like it's worth it. Um, if you can stop your mind. And I'm telling you you can. Because I've done it. So what happens is. I, I've been meditating for a couple of years. And... Um, my head starts swaying like this sort of I can't even imitate it I'll have to make a video showing you um, and it's involuntary my whole body is sort of going back and forth it's hard to do by holding the camera but and then I'm you know going in circles and things and and then all of a sudden I'm I'm there and I'm doing mantra meditation I'm using a singing bowl also and I was also doing a little bit of sun gazing and then my body starts twitching, you know, like I can't even show you, but it, because I'm holding a camera, it's really, um, like that is not me. I mean, um, seems like, oh, well, that's you, but, um, I'd have to show you in another video so you can know, even though you probably would have to really see me in person to, to understand. And I'm going to link an article about uh, somebody else that this happens to. And this can happen to anybody. And what happens is when you stop your mind in meditation, eventually your breath will stop. Well, your breath will probably stop before you stop your mind. And this is the key in this book, um, the little book of Hercules. And they say that all spiritual cultivation happens in stages, which makes total sense because... If it's not denominational, if it doesn't matter what you believe in, then it will happen the same way for everybody. And everybody says, you know, there's many paths. And there are, but they're really, in in some ways, there's only really one. Um, one path, because it's stopping your mind. That's That's it. You can't get there any other way. You know, it's all the same path to the same thing which it's just different ways of and if you're not stopping your mind if this practice if you're you know doing yoga and meditation isn't a large component of it then i feel like it's very greatly um undervalued um being undervalued and uh so what happens is my spirit i used to call it my spirit now i know it's the kundalini energy can take over my body and before I didn't have control over it. And it will take my body and jerk it around and send me almost looking like I'm in the convulsions um, and heal my back in ways that I could not possibly do on my own. Because anytime I try to stretch and heal myself on my own, I end up hurting myself. So I have a friend, Leia Tarunin. Um, I met up with her and Felipe, her husband, uh, in Toronto once, and I was telling them about it and some other friends. And um, so she's like, well, why don't you teach everybody how to do it? And I said, well, I don't know if I can because it just happens. I don't know how to do it. It just happens. It does me. And, and uh so this morning, my back's kind of sore today, and uh, it's really sore. And I so I sat down, started doing some Sufi grinds, which is a Kundalini yoga thing. But I'm telling you, I didn't do Kundalini yoga to make this happen. 
uh, even though I'm saying uh, I think Kundalini Yoga is very beneficial. Um, and I, I start letting it happen. And I realize, I sort of realized this um, a couple weeks ago, that, you know when you sort of like, you yawn and your body just goes, uh, um, and it just stretches and moves like you see a cat um, stretch, it, stretch out. I just noticed, at least for me, I mean, I don't know about for anybody else, but um, my breath stops during that stretch. And I realize the breath has to stop for the kundalini to be able to rise. And in everyday people who do, who haven't awoken it, um, this is when it comes, is when your breath stops. So it's sort of the same thing. However, I can let that happen for extended periods of time and not just a little stretch. Like it'll whip my body into crazy poses. And it's unbelievable when you see this. Um, and the way I feel afterwards, and after I come out, I'm in uh, higher, very high states of consciousness. I've channeled out of this. Um, it's called people and spoken to them and on the phone, and it's not me talking. And uh, it's just really weird, but it's really great. And it's not being possessed. It's an energy that's within us that wants to heal everything about you. And I'm going to link a blog um, called Your Spirit Wants to Heal You uh, that I wrote also. So if you want to read that. Um, but the key to doing this is consistent meditation and with the intent of stopping your breath and stopping your mind. And the way you can do this is through mantra meditation. Um, I think the quantum pause technique is very, very valuable because there is a, a um, holding your breath, breath uh, retention. And if you do breath retention, um, it sort of will train your your body to stop breathing. And, as, and it sort of links to, together with um, stopping your mind. So... I don't know, hopefully this video is going to upload. It's really long, so try it out. Try dedicating a portion of your life every day. It's very important for you to know who you are because all happiness comes from within, and it comes from beyond the mind. Everybody thinks that, uh, that um, you know, you're going to get happiness from somebody. You're going to get it from uh, learning something, getting a degree, getting a new job, um, you know, losing weight, whatever it is, gaining weight, <laughs> sometimes I think that, um, but I know it's not true, and I just think this painting behind me looks really cool, <laughs> I painted it, and so I just want to uh, encourage you to try meditation for an extended period of time, try it forever, to see if you can discover this within you as I know you can it's happened to me it's happening to me I know it's happening to a couple other people I know um, not many it's only really one um, I haven't met anybody else in fact that this involuntary movement happens to on the same level as me but I really dedicated a lot of time in the beginning to meditation so you do have to be very devoted not to someone else but to yourself so try it out. Uh, this video might be all over the place, but welcome to my brain. <laughs> I love you. Catch you later.